All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about animation, um, particularly how to animate a ball. But we're actually going to learn a lot from how to animate a ball. We're going to learn some, some principal techniques that apply to all kinds of things. That is how to, um, this really has to do with the, the squash idea, squash and stretch ideas uh, within animation. But um, we're also going to learn a little bit about spacing and things like that. I'm also going to just quickly show you a little bit about animating in Photoshop. Um, if you already have Photoshop, and, and hopefully if you have a newer version, I think it's CS6 or greater can do this. And uh, they have this um, video layers that are just, you know, they're pretty awesome. All right, so first thing is, let's go ahead and do that then. So what you want to do is open up a new file, go to film and video, and then I just use the HDTV. And then we have our thing set up. Now, here I make sure, I, always, I, I turn off the extras in Snap because I don't need it. Um, but if you want the extras, you can. You can pull down uh, different rulers and stuff or guidelines. Um, just make sure to turn off snap. Otherwise, when you draw, it's going to try to snap to the to those guides, and it's not good. So that's the first thing you want to do, because um, that, that will be on by default. So The next thing is you need to turn on the timeline, just in case it's not on. And that in that case, just go to Windows and then Timeline, which I think I'm going to show right now. And if I don't, then that's all you do is go to Window and then go down to Timeline, and it'll open up this little timeline right here. So on the background layer, I went ahead and drew a line. Uh, that means that that will that will carry on through the entire animation. I made it a, a regular layer here, and that allows me to just draw in the path that the ball is going to take. And then now we're going to go to Video Layers and make a new video layer. This is the blue layer here. This allows us to have it has different frames in it. Now you can technically delete frames stuff. I'm going to go ahead and enable onion skins, and then I'm also going to go to the set time, uh, the frame rate. We're going to go with 12. A lot of animate, a lot of animation is done in 12 or in twos, which is the same as 12 on this program in Photoshop. What that means is that so 24 frames a second is pretty common for animation, uh, but they work in twos. So instead of they have their frames every two, so there's a duplicate of, of a frame every two frames. So it's as if they're drawing only 12 frames. Some for some animation, you know, they will use ones if it's if it's important to really get something that looks you know really slow. But typically, most everything looks better in twos anyway. So that's why I work at 12 frames a second which is a pretty much the same as working in twos. All right. So then I'm trying to see in the next thing I do in the video, make sure I don't uh, leave anything out here. Oh, yeah, so I turned the opacity down of that layer, of this layer here. This is a, just a regular layer. Then I'm going to start drawing. So um, what I do here is I draw the keyframes in first. Now, the way I did it here is not the way you should actually do it. Um, I did it this way because... I, you do, down here you can you can stretch the uh, how you can zoom in and out here so you can see more of the keyframes and how far away you are. But the way I'm about to do it is not the way I recommend doing it in Photoshop because it's really difficult to delete one single frame sometimes. In fact, sometimes it's impossible to delete that one frame, and then you have to like really try to work around on it. In this case, I already knew that at the eight frames is how long I want this to fall. I want it to take eight frames to fall and land. And then um, about another um, four frames to go back up here or so. And so, because each one's gonna be a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. And sometimes it, it takes trial and error. Now, if you've done something enough times or if you can find you know, something online that already tells you how many frames you can use, then you can do that. You can also just bounce a ball to get an idea how long does it take to, you know, on how high it is and, and relative to your thing. How long does it take to bounce, bounce, bounce? The general idea, though, of is smooth in, smooth out. And so you would put a bunch of equal frames. Uh, that's one way to do it. You can put a bunch of equal frames between here and here. And then after you have all those equal frames, you want to add a bunch of in-betweens. Not a bunch, but add some in-betweens where it first takes off because as the ball first falls, any object as it first falls, it's going to fall slower and then it's going to speed up as gravity starts to pull on it and it reaches its terminal velocity. So start off with more frames and then have less frames as it comes down. Now I do something that's uh, stylistic. I'm, I'm, I, I do a lot of animating. Well, I don't do a lot, but I 
I've made some of my own video games and 2D video games. I did all the animation in them. And in video games, you really want to try to have the least amount of frames that look good, tell the story. And so that's what I did here with this ball animation. But typically, if you want it to be super smooth, you would have a bunch of even frames um, all, the way, all, the way, all the way down, pretty close together, and then have a bunch of, not a bunch, but have a bunch more in between. I shouldn't say a bunch. Have some in between frames up here. Don't have in betweens at the bottom because that makes no sense, right? A ball doesn't slow down before it hits the ground. It actually goes fast and then hits the ground suddenly. And then it slows down a little bit as it's taken off when it first takes off and then it then accelerates up in the air, then it slows down it reach it when it reaches the height. And so it has a slow down right about here and then it slows down here and then it goes fast again and then smacks the ground and then kind of slow and then picks up speed and then slows down like that. So that's the typical arc. It goes a little bit slow at first and then takes off, slows down once it reaches the top, kind of falls slow, so you want to have more, more frames here, and then less frames, and then smack, and then a couple more frames, less frames, less frames, more frames like that. And I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. I just wanted to explain because it it's important to understand this idea with, with spacing. So I draw my keyframes here. I have the ball here and the ball here. That's the starting point and the ending point. Some people consider the, the middle point a keyframe as well. And this only works for me because I knew that I'm going to have eight frames here. Now, instead, what you should do is take your keyframes on the video um, layers, merge or not, well, just pull this all the way down until you, and, then, and then zoom in so we can only see one frame. So that way your video file is one frame big. And then on that one frame, draw the keyframe here and then and then make another keyframe. That is make another video frame that's only one frame long. And um, you can do that by going up to the layer and then the video thing. And you know, you can also make a shortcut for it. Um, like control, alt, shift, B or something, whatever you want to make it. Um, it's better to have a shortcut, I think. Anyway. Um, then so you make one for here and then one for here. So those are going to be two just single frame blue blues. And that's going to be your keyframes. You're going to set those however far apart you want. And then you're going to have a fr uh, one like this right here that has several frames in it. And then you can add those in between frames until it looks right. And then you can cut off what you don't need in between the two keyframes. So that's your in between frames. And uh, yeah, that works out pretty good. And then if you want to have a keyframe in the center too, you can do that. And then you'd have, so you'd have one that's only you know so in other words when I say keyframe that's that's one of these blue one of these blue ones that's a video layer that is only one frame big so you'd have one frame big one frame big one frame big then you'd have a longer one with multiple frames here and one here that way you can add in those in between frames okay so I don't put the balls too close together because again I'm, I'm going for a bouncing ball and I'm trying to conserve the amount of frames that I use and uh, but still get something smooth and I use some tricks that work really good for video games but can also work good for animation uh, especially if it's an animation that you don't want to spend a lot of, you know a lot of time on as you're trying you're trying to conserve time for yourself because you actually want to finish animation and you're like the only one working on it then yeah using this conservative method is really going to help out a lot all right, let me go ahead and uh, just fast forward whatever. I'm, I don't know what I'm doing there, so I'm going to just fast forward here for a second. Um, so what I'm showing here is, is a, it's called squash. Um, to make a ball animation look cooler, add a little bit of squish to it. Now, if it was an object that when it squish, well, then like a, I don't know, a marble, it's probably not going to really bounce much, right? Typically things that bounce are going to have some squishiness. So in this case, we're using like a rubber ball, let's say a racquetball or something. Now, if you were to use a high speed camera and film a racquetball falling and hitting the ground or being thrown to the ground, what you'll notice is that on that frame, when it hits the ground, if you have a high speed camera, it needs to be like <clears throat> probably at least 500 frames a second. When you maybe maybe you can see it with a little bit less, you just don't want you know it to be all blurry. 
And then when you when you film it right there in the, the, as that side view, it's actually going to squash when it hits the ground. It's actually really crazy what happens when you watch things in slow motion. I recommend anyone that wants to get into anima animating um, to watch slow motion videos. Uh, watch a picture in slow motion, you know, that is filmed on a high speed camera. And it's crazy what you'll see. Watch someone get punched in the face with a boxing glove. And watch how much their face distorts. So all these principles that have been taught for years and years, like by Disney and stuff, uh, where you want to have the squash and stretch is super important because it actually happens in real life for the most part. So here I have my squash ball. Don't put a round ball there. So it's squash. And also when you squash your ball, make sure that it's still taking up the same amount of volume. So if it's this high and you squish it, it has to become longer. You can't just, ha you can't just squish a ball and have it be the same width, right? Because as you squish this down, the sides are going to go out. So just keep that in mind. Just a simple, simple thing to overlook. So as you can see here, I'm, I have them close together at first. I'm drawing on each frame. And how do you do this in Photoshop? It's really easy. So I have the onion skin on. I click right here, and that brings me to the next frame. I know I'm on the next frame because this is an onion skin. That is, it's not as dark. Um, when I go back, you'll see when, I, when I'm drawing, notice it's a little bit darker. If you want to make the onion skins lighter, you can just go to these little, this little icon here. And I can't remember what it's called, but I think it's onion skin settings. And you can change it. It's a default at 50 max and 25 minimum. You can change it to 1530 or even, uh, you know, 1030 or 1025, whatever you need, you need it at. But the default works pretty good. And so this is the frame I'm actually on. Now, when I go to the next frame, you're going to see I'm going to click right there, bam. Now I know I'm on the next frame because this right here is light. Now I can now I can see where I'm drawing and how far I want to go. Another thing that I haven't really figured out with Photoshop yet, um, and it's kind of irritating, is that if you if you do this, you click on this next frame and then you draw something and then hit and then you don't like it, hit undo, it's going to go back to where you last were on the on the thing. Uh, usually that's the last frame, but sometimes if you were on a frame over here, it's going to jump back over there. So then you have to go back to the frame and, and then click forward again. So in this case, I have to click forward again after I hit undo. Now what I what I started doing is having a little area right here that I can click on that's technically off my animation. You know, So this would be my animation window somewhere in here. And this little area down here is not going to be in my animation. It's outside my animation window. And I click there. So what I do is... As I'm on here, as I'll click down here with the pen, I'll just tap down here with the pen, so it makes a little dot. So now, when I draw here, if I don't like it and I hit undo, it's not going to un. It's you know, I just hit undo one time. It's not going to go back to the previous frame because it has a little dot there. And uh, if I hit undo again, then it'll go back to the frame. Anyway, that allows you to draw again, and then yeah, it makes, saves a lot of time or it saves a lot of frustration. It only takes a second to tap and then draw the next one. Tap, draw the next one. And so now you can see, I at first I keep them close together, as you can see, overlapping. Now, now they're just touching, and now look at they're getting further away. Now, as a general pencil, when something's falling, these should keep getting further and further away. Now, again, unless you're doing the um, type animation where everything is equal distance, equal distance away, and then you only add more frames here. Uh, the, toward the top and so that way it still falls. Even then you still want, if everything's pretty close together, once you get to here, the, the part where it starts falling the fastest, you want to space them apart a little, bit, a little bit further. If you just have equal spacing all the way down, it won't look as good. And so it's just a trick you want to learn with things that are moving or falling. Like if you throw a punch, and let's say the punch starts from here, the wind up is slow so you have a lot more frames. Then the takeoff is a little bit slow, so a lot, a lot more frames. And then before you get to here, from here to here, as, as, the, as the fist flies, you want to make sure that there's, like this, that they get further and further apart. So the fist is here, then you draw it here, then you draw it here, then you draw it here, and then you finally draw it there. And so the line ends up looking like close. Like the, Imagine this ball was a fist. 
So they're close together, close together, a little bit further, and a little bit further, and then finally further. Now another thing I like to do is once I get down to this area where I want my okay, let's go. I think I messed up here somewhere, and I had to yeah, see, I had to do a lot of fixing there. It was kind of irritating. Um, that's why I should have done my keyframes separately, like I said before. So right here, the contact point like this. Don't have the point down here. Um, you could if you want, but I typically think it looks better when you have this smash here. And this squash of this ball, this frame, is right before this this uh, rectangle squash. Or not rectangle, um, but horizontal squash. I like it when, and also you want to make sure it's centered right in the middle of this. We're close to it. Otherwise, it's going to look like the ball's like moving down and up, like it's changing its angle or something. I like having... Like a almost like a potato, the bigger the bigger half down here, and then skinnier side up there, and it should only be just barely, barely like that. And I'm, hopefully, I draw it like that right now. As you can see, that's pretty much they're like an egg, so it's bigger down here and a little bit skinnier up there, and that's the stretch. And then right away, some people will draw this a little bit closer not okay if this one is touching the touching the ground the one that's leaping away should not be touching the ground so this frame should not be touching the ground now i like it like this it adds a more snap feel to it when it when it snaps off the ground but you could also draw this to where it barely overlaps this one like that and, and has maybe a little bit of stretch to it and that looks good too so that's something to keep in mind you can try them both out and see it's only one frame so you can try Try it both ways. Like uh, you can always erase it and go back to the frame and draw it a little bit different way, and then see how that looks. So watch it with, with the, with the frames like that, and then go back and er erase that frame. And uh, and so on Photoshop, all you do is you just you literally just on this thing you just you just scrub back to the frame you're at. So you go boom, go back here, and then once this is black, you know you're on that frame. You can erase this and then just redraw it like this, overlapping a little bit, and then replay it and see how that looks. So notice I keep them close together at first, and now they're getting further apart, and then bam. So I'm using really using economy of movement here, and I'm also making a, a more fast bounce this way, and it'll look natural. And now I get slow up top. Notice that when I get up to the top, from there from there to there, there's space between it still, because the, the slowest part is when it reaches as high as it's going to go. So it starts to slow down as it's reaching as high as it's going to go, but it doesn't reach the slowest part until it's right here and it stops for a moment. There, if you want, you can actually draw an overlapping frame. And that's why I draw the next one as it's going back down. That's where I draw my overlapping frame. Now, if you want to, you can actually draw it really, really close overlapping. It all depends how many frames that you're, you're drawing in between this animation. If I had a lot more frames in between here, like twice as many as I have, then I would have to draw one here and then one there in order to make it look like this is slower than everything else. Because if there's a bunch of frames here, that has to be more frames here. That's the idea that however many frames I use here to make to make it fall, I have to use more frames here to make it look slow. And bam, and then now I'm going to draw another frame here. Notice it's getting further away. And then a little bit further away, and then finally hitting the ground. And it's really important if I add it, if I would have added a frame between these two frames, between here and here, it would look like it slows down before it hits the ground, and that's not what happens. But you do want to have that that contact one. Uh, this is the most important one: having this contact ball hit the ground, and then having the squash ball right afterwards. Those are your two most important ones for ground contact. When you take off. You can have it here to where it's not touching this animation, where it's up here, or to where it's slightly overlapping, but don't make it to where it's also touching the ground. Otherwise, the ball looks like it hits and turns and shifts. It just doesn't look right. You can try it and see, and you'll see why it doesn't look right. I like to have it like that, so it's a little bit snappy as it comes off. And then again, same thing here, just bam, less movement. Make sure that contact ball there, the squash, and then the take away and I tried a couple different things so I try uh, this kind of takeaway and I think I play it let me see what that looks like I have the uh, onion skin still on I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off so 
So what I was showing there is it hits and it accelerates away. Now that wouldn't happen um, from if it was just bouncing like this. It would just accelerate away unless it had some sort of powers of its own. But I just wanted to show like how to draw something accelerating away. It's the spacing. So it's the, and that's basically with timing. So notice each one gets further away. And then I have a little bit of stretch there at the end. That really sells the idea that it's really taken off. So that's if you wanted to draw something like shoom, being, you know, like being thrown like a baseball or something, like that's how you do it. You would have it close together at first and then boom, take off. Now if it was like a bullet coming out of a gun, it would it would immediately take off fast. It doesn't have to doesn't need to build up. Alright, then I decided to change the ending animations here to a, like a roll. So here you have to, in order to make something look slow, you have to draw a bunch of frames close together. So as it lands, now everything's gonna get close together. Boom, really look that. I'm drawing each one very close together. And again to do that, I'm just hitting the the forward here, one frame at a time, one frame at a time, one frame at a time. And so you draw, hit hit one other frame, draw your next one, hit the frame, draw the next one, and so forth. And it's not too hard to do. And then turn off turn off the uh, onion skin so I can then see the animation as it's supposed to look. Bam, bam, bam. So you can see it actually looks pretty clean even though I skipped a lot of frames. So I'm not sure how long. That's a little over two seconds. Here's the two second mark right here. So it looks like it's almost three seconds long. And within that, so within that first, uh, what was it, second here, well, it's 12 frames a second, so I had to use all 12 frames. Um, but I, normally they probably would have taken, an animator might have used a, the, that full first, that full second just to get the ball to fall and that that first arc and arcing fall and I only use eight frames rather than 12 to do that I and I just I like to get away with this as few as possible because um, I don't like animating very much <laughs> it's very tedious um, but you know the payoff is good oh yeah and then here I'm gonna show you how to make a video so after you're done you can save as an animated gif or you can save as video I'm gonna show you a couple different tricks here so that's how you go here to render the video you can set the you know how, how big you want it to be so you can use uh, 1080p at 24 frames or 1080 1080i at 29 I think you do 1080p at 29 I recommend 1080p it looks better interlace never looks good at least in my opinion you can also do high medium and low I just showing all the different different options you have here so so I'm gonna do 1080p 24 frames a second um, even though and here, when I say this out, I'm gonna I want to change that to 12 because I want it to match. If you don't make it, if you don't make that match, whatever you drew in, then your video will look weird. So make sure to match it. It doesn't always look weird, but I just I recommend matching it. I think it automatically doubles it up. I'm not sure. Like automatically adds two frames. So every frame you did, if you if you worked in 12 and then you save in 24, I think it automatically doubles every frame that you drew um, next to each other. I'm not sure if it does that or not, though. Now another thing you can do is after you make your your video, because um, you know because get the gift can can easily get too big and too long, so you can save it as a video, and then go to file and then re-import it import your video back and when you I don't, I don't think I do this in this video but when you import the the video back so save it as mp4 and then come back and import that that video and then when you can choose the amount of frames choose to only have half the amount of frames or even you know choose to only have four four of every frame and so it basically two means it's going to be twice as less frames four four times as less frames and so that will make the animation will still be smooth I recommend I can only do in two try that first see how it looks and so that way you reduce it by half and then after that then you go ahead and save it go to file and then go to export 
save for web and then choose GIF and then have it as a GIF. You can also you know, reduce the amount of colors to like 32. Depends on how colorful your piece is on how many colors you can reduce it to and still look good. So save as a GIF here. And notice here that it's 34 frames. That's, that's kind of long for a GIF. And here I put the colors to 32. I could have got I could have got it down less since it's black and white. Probably 16 would have still looked good. Hit this little button down here to zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And you can see there that's how it's going to save, and that looks pretty good. Um, you know, and that's a GIF, but that you know that's a 32 or 34 frame GIF, kind of big. I can reduce that in half by doing that little trick that I just said by going to save as a video and then import import the video and, and as uh, skipping every other frame, so as skipping two and then resave it again as a GIF. All right, just a couple of the things I wanted to show really quickly here. Um, so I'm showing now what not to do. So here I'm going to draw, I open up a new file, and now I'm drawing the, I'm drawing the balls being completely equally spaced apart. Wait, hold on, where is that at here, sorry. I don't, know, I don't know if I draw it in real time. If I do, it doesn't take me very long at all to do. It's pretty pretty easy to do. So notice how that looks. That just is, it doesn't look right. One, it looks really fast. Now, even if I were to draw those closer together, it still wouldn't look right. The when because the, a ball, it would look like a like a steel ball bouncing, which makes no sense. But also the the speed at which it falls isn't correct because everything's equally spaced something doesn't fall equally spaced. If I film a ball falling, I'm going to see that I'm going to have more frames on my video, or at least not more frames, but when I play the video in slow motion, the ball is going to be closer together up here, and then the ball is going to have more space in between each frame. So if I go frame by frame on a video that I film, the ball is going to be really close together, almost completely overlapping, like barely even moving. And then as as it comes and starts falling faster, each frame the ball is going to be farther and farther apart from each other until it hits the ground. And so that's important. Alright, so, so I'm basically just saying, no, don't do that. Don't just equally space space it and don't. And, and notice that also the ball had no um, flattening out. It was just a straight round ball the entire time, and which looks odd. So I'm just showing how. Okay, let's go to the next part here. So now, now I want to show really quickly here. Um, added more frames so you can kind of see the path of the, the animated animations of the ball. So, as you can see there, I have three balls overlapping, and then these are the closest. And this one gets a little bit further away, a little bit further away, further away, and then finally furthest away. And then, and then the contact, and then the squash, and then you can see the next part of the animation, and then the takeoff, and then a little bit, a little bit still close together, but then bam, it leaps, leaps far, and then it starts to slow down, hits the slowest part, and then really slows down, which I have them overlapping, as you can see, overlapping, and then coming further, further, and it's contact again. So I follow that same principle all the way through, and you can see that as it plays like this. And also, it just kind of looks cool. I just want to play this real quick, because the animation looks kind of neat. Oh, I thought I played it. I guess I... Do I play it here? I know I played it at some point. Uh, thought I, I thought I played it like that. Oh, I do. I think at the end right there. Uh, and then another thing, I was just showing you like the distance. So I was just drawing the distance between each animation so you can kind of see how much space is between them. Uh, but hopefully I explained it well enough that you don't need that. Thanks, Animate. <laughs> uh, I did want to show this there we go. This is kind of cool. 
So I'm leaving. There it is. It's kind of cold. It almost looks like it's going in slow motion. And all I did is I left five frames behind and no frames in front uh, for the onion skin. And I think if you save it with the onion skin, I think it'll save it like an animation. So it's kind of a cool way to add almost like a trailing effect. And it's kind of cool. All right, so that concludes this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey, if you did enjoy it, do me a favor. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up and then share this video um, with people that you think might enjoy it or just share it on your favorite social media because if you learn something from it, somebody else will too, guarantee it. And then finally, um, go ahead and subscribe. And after you subscribe, the, you know, there's that little bell icon. Make sure to click that little bell icon. That's to make sure that you get notified. Otherwise, you might never see a video from me again. But if you click that bell notification, there's a good chance you'll see me again. Also, stay tuned for my giveaway of a Cintiq. So that's a thousand dollar drawing tablet by Wacom. It's not actually it's a drawing screen. You draw right on the screen. It's a 12 inch one. It's the 12 WX. So it's the one it's the one that I had um, was using right before I got this one, the 13, uh, the 13 whatever it's called, um, 13 touch. And honestly, I still really love the 12 WX. It had the slider touch thing on it uh, for zooming in and out and stuff. And it was just, I loved it. It was awesome. But with touch, a lot of programs, you know, allow me to zoom in out with touch and rotate. And that's just so much cooler and faster. Sometimes it's kind of irritating because the even even if I wear the hand guard, the little glove, sometimes it's, it's still irritating because it doesn't, uh, it'll stick down here, my hand will touch. And even though it has a glove on it, it's too thin or something and it will still sometimes activate um, and push some button or something or bring up a menu or something like that and that's kind of irritating sometimes I found a solution to that is instead of using the I might try like a better brand maybe I think Cintiq sells one to see if it's a little bit thicker but um, I did find an easy workaround buying those those stretchy gloves at the dollar store or you can find them at Walmart and stuff uh, almost all the time in the winter time they have them you can always you can always find them on Amazon, but those they're like they look really really tiny when they're not on your hand, and then they stretch over your hand, and then you just cut off your middle finger, your your pointer finger, and your thumb, and now you have basically a drawing glove. But that one's thick enough so that when your hand rests on the screen, it's not going to activate stuff. So just a quick tip that uh, you might uh, find useful. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, let me know we got. Oh yeah, one more thing. What do you guys want to see in the comments? I do all kinds of stuff. I mean, uh, sculpting, I'm I'm pretty good at, but I'm not the best at it. But I, I do know like a lot of principles about sculpting. I know a lot of principles principles anim about animation. I study animation for a long time. Uh, study with uh, forget the guy's name that worked for Disney. Uh, he has uh, a book out that's really really good. But he also had he had a series out that cost like 900, 900 bucks, and I went ahead and, and got that, and went through the entire course, uh, with uh, his his course, and uh, learned so much from it. And mainly for you know for video games, I just I really wanted to make sure that I, I knew as much as I could about animation. And then over over time, just you know doing doing a decent amount of animation for my video games and stuff, and just for practice on the side, I've learned a lot um, about how, how to animate and some principles and rules and how to apply them, and also through application, trying to get it to work through trial and error, and I found out my own tricks, um, like how to get waterfalls to um, fall with just a few frames, like in a video game. Because with the, with the 2D video game, um, especially if you want the graphics looking really, really pretty and awesome, you got to find tricks because even with, you know, like back, this was back on the Xbox 360, but even on a PS4, um, you have to be conservative with the size of your sprites and stuff like that because uh, unless you have a really good programmer that really knows how to optimize everything really good, you want to try to conserve the, the you know, the amount, the, the size of your sprites and the, the amount of sprites you have. So that is the amount of frames per animation um, to make it that much, you know, that me that much smoother. Especially, like I said, if you want it to look really, really beautiful with a lot of colors and just, you know, just awesome looking graphics. Um, but yeah, so I learned a lot of cool tricks also to conserve the amount of frames to still make it look good. I'll, I'll show a quick example here. It's at the end of the video, so I can probably go in and show this really fast. All right, so this isn't finished yet. Um, 
this is something now, t now now originally she didn't actually have tassels she actually had a bra but um this was originally for a, a ninja game that i was developing and i never did get to finish it um it, it anyway it's a long story but hopefully i will get to finish it sometime in the future i actually have a whole new idea for the story and stuff so uh, it's going to be a much better game for waiting. So this is only done with 13 frames. That was why I wanted to show it. If you're conservative, and there's certain tricks you can learn, um, like doubling up certain frames, like have everything, every frame on here is only played um, for 0.1 of a second. Um, but there's a couple frames where I have it at 0.2. In order to give that pause, like right when she's lifting her shirt up and it has to pause going around her boobs, and then when she pauses, going back over her boobs. Um, sorry if you guys think that's pervy. All right, so I can't remember if I already showed this or not. I don't know if I press unpause. But this is something I was working on for a video game, uh, redoing it. And uh, you know, the sprite's much, much smaller than this, but I decided to go ahead and scale it up. I just want to see what I can do with it. This is only 13 frames. So in 13 frames, I'm able to get something that looks, I think, pretty smooth for 13 frames. And like I said, with video games, you want to stay a lot shorter. And then the original sprite that I did for the video game is here. And notice it's not nearly as smooth, but it's, it's a lot smaller. And, and it's, it's pretty small. She's pretty small on screen. Kind of like the size of probably like Shinobi back on the... Uh, this, I think it was the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo, one of the two. But yeah, Sony, I think it was Super Nintendo. But so there you go. So that, anyway, so I made it, I made it a lot smoother now. Um, I added the tassels instead of the bra, but that really doesn't make it much of a difference. And that was the waiting animation between uh, when you're playing the game, kind of like Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, when if you stop playing, then he would like look at the screen and tap his foot. So this is this is her waiting animation. Um, so if you don't play the game, then, then she'll stop and do that and show her, show her boobs like every 10 seconds or so. Well, not her actual boobs, but you know, you get the idea. Anyway, so, all right, thank you for watching.